Hello and welcome to the 2019-20 school year. My name is Nate Werner and I'm the Activities Director and one of the Associate Principals here at Appleton North High School. I am very happy that you are watching this screencast today since that means you have chosen to participate in a co-curricular activity here at Appleton North. Part of the reason we require students and parents to either come to a code meeting or view this code meeting screencast is because it is very important to have knowledge of how the Code of Conduct works and the meaning behind it. In reality, most people don't really think about the Code of Conduct unless something takes place that causes the code to happen to them. Therefore, the purpose of viewing this video is to receive this important information regarding the Code of Conduct and to communicate the expectations that the Appleton Area School District has for any student who participates in athletics, selected clubs, and other school activities. Hopefully by watching this, you can develop a better understanding of the aspects of the code that come up often in order to avoid any conflicts that might come up, especially when it comes to issues of eligibility. We take your participation in a co-curricular activity here at Appleton North very seriously, and we want your experience participating in our programs to be a positive one. Therefore, we have many goals and core values in our activities department that we feel are very important to share with you. First off, we feel strongly that participation in activities and sports in high school are equally important to the overall education of students as what they learn inside of the classroom. Obviously, you are here first and foremost to earn a diploma, but getting a true education often involves more than just what is taught in class. However, many studies show that participation in co-curricular activities correlates to better grades and higher overall GPAs than students who are not involved in co-curricular activities. If you make the choice to be involved in a co-curricular activity, then you are taking on an extra responsibility that comes with extra expectations. We consider our programs to be an extension of the classroom, and they will be treated differently than if you are part of a private club sport or program. There is a standard of behavior that we expect you to follow if you are choosing to be part of our programs. You are now participating for Appleton North High School, which is bigger than you. You are not entitled to anything and participation is a privilege and you must earn what you get. Hopefully the Code of Conduct can aid and assist you in leading a healthy and positive lifestyle during your years at Appleton North. Part of that learning and education that we want you all to experience involves competition. This competition can be very rewarding for you, but the most important thing we want you to learn when you compete is both how to win and how to lose with humility and grace. One of my former coaches taught me that a true winner is both humble in victory and gracious in defeat. Finally, we also want you to see you participating in many, as many activities as you can while still being able to maintain a healthy balance in your life. We encourage multi-sport activities and will work hard to make sure that you can experience the best of all of our programs here at Appleton North. In the end, we want you to be able to look back on your high school experience and feel like you were able to create positive and long-lasting memories, friendships, and relationships that you will remember fondly and hopefully can still smile about years later. The Appleton Area School District designates four categories of co-curricular activities at each of our high schools. The four categories are listed on this slide, and the Code of Conduct applies to categories 1 and 2. All of you watching this screencast will be participating in a Category 1, or athletic and performance competition-based activity. Therefore, all of the rules of the Code of Conduct document will apply to you and you will be required to follow them year-round, which includes the off-season and summer months. The next few slides in this screencast deal with one of the most important aspects of your participation in co-curricular activities here at Appleton North, and that is your eligibility. There are many factors that determine whether a student is able to participate in a co-curricular activity, and these next slides will cover everything that you will need to do in order to be able to participate in practices, events, performances on a daily basis at Appleton North. The first item of eligibility deals with forms and fees. This aspect of eligibility deals mostly with students who are involved in athletics. However, some students in other clubs like debate, forensics, and theater and one act also need to pay participation fees. If you plan to participate in a sport at Appleton North, you must have the following forms on file in the main office. These forms can be found in the office or online on the AASD website. The first form is called the sports form. 
and it actually consists of several forms condensed into one. We also require the concussion agreement form, which shows you have read the information on concussions, and the consent to treat form, which allows our licensed athletic trainer to share information about injuries to your medical provider. Please make a special note that no student will be able to even try out for a sport unless they have an updated physical or alternate year form on file in the office. Physicals are valid from March 31st to April 1st of the following year and are good for two years. If you have any questions on whether you have a current physical on file, feel free to call the main office and we can let you know. Again, coaches will not allow any student to even step foot on a court, field, or dip in the pool without a current physical or alternate year form on file. So please take care of this before the first day of practice. All of the other forms, along with the $50 participation fee, will be due before the first scheduled competition. If you don't have this paperwork turned in or fees paid, we will hold you out of competing, so please take care of this. The Appleton Area School District does have a $200 family cap and a $250 joint middle school and high school family cap for participation fees. Finally, if there is a financial hardship that prevents you from being able to pay the $50 participation fee, please see the activities director. No student will ever be prevented from participating due to a financial hardship. As stated earlier, we hold any student who chooses to participate in a co-curricular activity to high academic standards. Therefore, in order to participate, you must meet academic eligibility requirements. Here is a review of those requirements. You must be enrolled in at least five courses and passing all of them in order to participate. This usually isn't an issue for most students, but sometimes second semester seniors drop below five courses and forget that it affects their eligibility. So, please keep that in mind when scheduling courses or considering dropping a course. As stated before, no student may have a failing grade in any of their courses. The activities director will perform academic grade checks at the end of each quarter to determine eligibility. At the end of first and third quarter, if a student earns an F in any class, they will be placed on an academic re-engagement period and will have 10 school days to get their grade to passing. During this re-engagement period, the student may still practice and compete. However, if they are still not passing by the 11th school day, then they will be ineligible from both practice and competition until they are passing. The AD will also do a grade check at the end of each semester. If a student earns an F in any class at the end of first semester, they will be ineligible from participating in any contest, game, or performance for 15 school days. However, during this time of event ineligibility, they may still practice. On the 16th school day, if the student is passing all classes, they will be reinstated. If not, they will remain ineligible until they are passing. If a student fails a second semester course, then that suspension will carry over to the following school year. In past years, the AD would also perform a mid-quarter academic grade check. Appleton Area School District teachers are now only required to submit the career and life skills grades at mid-quarter. Therefore, at the current time, a mid-quarter grade check will not be performed. However, the AASD is working towards developing a system to tie a student's career and life skills grades to the Code of Conduct. Teachers, administrators, and students are still working through what this may look like, but I would say that there will most likely be some changes to the Code of Conduct regarding the CLS grades within the coming school year. So please be aware of these coming changes regarding the CLS grades and the Code of Conduct. The number one issue that affects a student's ability to participate in co-curricular activities on a day-to-day -day basis is the daily attendance eligibility requirement. Please pay particular attention to this as it will most likely affect all of you at some point in your school year. The bottom line is that if you plan to practice, play, or perform for your Appleton North team or club on any given day, you must attend and be present in school for the entire school day. This is what I refer to as the all day or no play rule. This means that if a student is ill for all or even part of the day or is on excuse for any class, they will not be allowed to practice, play, or perform after school or that evening. This includes when a parent or guardian calls them in. For example, if a student is feeling ill 
and it is decided that he or she will stay home, but then begins to feel better later and returns to school at any point during the day, that student is not allowed to participate in their co-curricular activity after school regardless of whether the parent or guardian excuses the student. Now, there are some exceptions to the all day or no play rule. If a student misses class for any of the following reasons, they may still practice or compete after school or that evening. Funerals, court appearances, school approved trips, AP tests, college visits, and DMV appointments. Medical, dental, and orthodontic appointments are also considered excused absences. However, you must bring back documentation of your appointment to student services when you return to school. Many people wonder why we require documentation for medical, dental, and ortho appointments. As I often explain to students, it isn't that we don't believe that you were at the doctor, dentist, or ortho, but if we simply excused every student who told us that they were at an appointment, we would most likely see a sharp increase in undocumented appointments at our school on a daily basis. Student services will send an email to both the activities director and the coaches and advisors each day with a list of all the students who missed a class on any given day. So I will be in contact with any student that is included on this daily list of missed classes. If you ever run into a situation where you are unaware of whether an absence will be excused regarding the co-curricular activity participation, please don't hesitate to contact the activities director. However, I would prefer that you contact me prior to the absence rather than after the absence takes place. I will usually work with you as long as you are proactive about things. Included in the activities paperwork or available online on the AASD website is a copy of the AASD grade 9 through 11, excuse me, 9 through 12 code of conduct. If you are involved in an activity that does not require you to have this paperwork, a copy of this document can be found on the AASD website. Included in the Code of Conduct document is a detailed list of what the Appleton Area School District School Board considers to be Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 code violations. As stated earlier, all students involved in a Category 1 and Category 2 activity are required to follow the code rules. Therefore, if you have any questions about the behavioral code expectations, please refer to the Code of Conduct document. Please note that violations are categories categorized by the severity of the violation and the consequence for each violation is dependent on the category of co-curricular activity one is involved in. Appendix A and B in the Code of Conduct document are good resources when looking at the specific consequences of each type of code violation. Please note also that there is a community service hours component to each code violation consequence. Students may choose to serve community service hours to decrease the severity of the code suspension. However, these community service hours need to be separate from any other volunteer hours done for any other organization or club. Also, any code violation triggered by drug or alcohol use will include an AODA assessment by the Appleton North Student Assistant Program Coordinator, Mrs. Abby Vanderloop. Finally, I need to point out that as part of the Code of Conduct, I am required to investigate any accusation of a North student who has allegedly violated the code. These investigations will sometimes lead to consequences and sometimes will not. But I want you to know that it is never my intention to be out to get anyone, and any student that I meet with will always be considered innocent until proven otherwise. Although our hope is that all students will have a positive experience in our programs and in their dealings with all of their coaches and advisors, we know that from time to time, situations sometimes arise when a student or parent does not see eye to eye with the coach or advisor. If a situation like this were, were to ever arise with you, we ask that the following procedure is followed. The student first needs to be the one to speak to the coach or advisor. If after the conversation between the student and the coach or advisor happens, a parent or guardian still feels they need to be involved, then they first need to make an appointment with the coach or advisor for a face-to-face -face meeting. We ask that if at all possible, email is avoided as a means for communication, as often things can be misconstrued over email. We also ask that a parent never confront a coach or advisor prior to, during, or after a practice, game, event, meet, performance, or contest. And, playing time, technical, 
or technical decision making or discussing students other than your own son or daughter will be off limits in this discussion with the coach or advisor. If after this face-to-face -face meeting there are still unresolved issues, then we ask that an appointment is made with the activities director. Sometimes these meetings will include the student along with the parent or guardian, and other times they will not. Two items that come up often during the course of any school year that sometimes affect both students and parents are social media posts and issues of sportsmanship during games, events, or meets. Sometimes students assume that what they post on social media is their own private business since they posted it on their own phone or other device. However, when a student chooses to post on social media, then what they post immediately becomes public information that is subject to the code of conduct. This concept is often difficult for students and parents to understand, so I am hoping you take this very seriously. I realize it sounds very cliche, but one truly needs to think before they post anything on social media and be aware of the possible dangers and consequences their posts may have for them as a student involved in co-curricular activities at Appleton North. Not only are social media posts subject to the code of conduct, but they also might have consequences for future potential colleges, teams, or businesses that a student might wish to eventually attend, participate on, or work for. Therefore, please be mindful of this as you use social media. When used properly, social media can be a wonderful tool for anyone involved in co-curricular activities. But, once again, anything you post immediately becomes public information that can be used by anyone else. The other issue that often comes up during the school year is behavior at sporting events. Whether you are a student, parent, or fan that attends our events, we expect a class level of behavior and sportsmanship to do be displayed toward officials, game workers, participating athletes, coaches, fans, and opponents at all times. Simply paying your admission is not a ticket to be able to say whatever you want at a game. You may disagree with an official's call, but without officials, we have no games, and students do not have the opportunity to compete. As many of you may already be aware, there is a serious shortage of high school sports officials, and many of the officials who are leaving the business cite the way they have been treated by fans at games as the number one reason why they are no longer officiating. I obviously don't hear everything at our events, but please be aware that if you are using abusive language or disparaging or inappropriate comments toward an official, coach, player, or fan at one of our events, I will be having a conversation with you about it, and you may be asked to leave the event altogether. My hope is that all of our events are a positive experience for everyone involved. So please do your part to ensure that we maintain a class level of behavior and sportsmanship at our events and that we do things the lightning way. Living in the fine state of Wisconsin has many privileges and rewards, but anyone who lives here knows that at some point during each school year, we will be dealing with inclement weather when it comes to our events here at Appleton North. If school is ever canceled due to inclement weather, then there will be no after school of practices or events. If we do have school, but there is inclement weather in the afternoon or evening that will cause the postponement of an event, then the ADs of the schools involved will work out a makeup date for the postponed games, and it will be announced as soon as possible. We ask that you don't call the office in the morning of an event to ask the status of whether it will happen. As soon as decisions are made, communication will go out to coaches, advisors, students, parents, and fans. If we have lightning or severe weather occur while an outdoor event is going on, or any event held in our natatorium, then there will be a suspension of 30 minutes from the last strike, and time will restart with each new occurrence. We will also clear all spectators from the bleachers, and people will be moved indoors until the weather clears. We realize this can be inconvenient for people, but safety is our number one concern at all of our events. In order to run a quality co-curricular program at any high school, it takes a lot of help. We are extremely lucky to have the Appleton North Booster Club at work for our school, helping our students involved in co-curricular activities. The Booster Club consists of all volunteers who come together to financially support the needs of Appleton North athletics and activities. They have spent thousands and thousands of dollars over the years in support of all of our programs. In fact, during the 2018-19 school year, the Booster Club helped support 
our new pool display board, the new stadium scoreboard, the new conference and state championship banners in the gym, the new marching band uniforms, and many more wonderful initiatives that have aided our school. I would ask all parents and guardians to please consider joining the Booster Club or helping out by volunteering to work concessions at our events. In fact, the Booster Club has several important board positions that need to be filled for the 2019-20 school year. You can also help by participating in our November Artisan Fair or June Golf Outing. If you have any questions about the Booster Club, feel free to contact the Appleton North Booster Club President, Mr. J. Trainer at j at cadencecrew.com. I want to personally thank the Booster Club for all they do for Appleton North and for all of our students. With so many opportunities for students, parents, and fans to watch our students play and perform, I wanted to take some time to briefly go over the various types of passes that are available for purchase for our events. By purchasing these season passes, people can save a lot of money as opposed to paying individual admission prices at each event. Our theatrical performances prices vary throughout the year, so please check with the box office before each of those performances. For our regular season athletic events, we charge $5 for adults, $2 for students, and Cedar Citizens and children under 5 are free. However, if an Appleton North student purchases a school activity pass, they will get in free to all our regular season events, as well as the one-act musical, the spring show, and theatrical performances. Please note, however, that any WIAA playoff event will charge admission to all who enter. Appleton North also sells athletic season passes, and these prices vary based on the sport that you are purchasing the pass for. These passes can be purchased in the main office or at the first few events of that particular sport. Finally, we will again be selling FBA on the road passes for $30. These passes will admit you to any event at an opposing Fox Valley Association school in which the Lightning are participating in. However, the on-the-road pass is not valid for Appleton North home games or for away VFA football games at any Wisconsin Valley Conference school. As I wrap up this screencast, I want to point out an important event that will be coming up on the first day of school on September 3rd. We will be holding our annual activity fair on that day during the lunch hours on the outside patio. This is an outstanding October, uh, opportunity for all students to be able to see all the clubs and sports that are available at Appleton North High School. Each club and sport will be invited to have a table at the activity fair. Students can ask questions about each club and sport and have the ability to sign up to get more information about each group. If it rains on the day of the activity fair, we will bring it inside into the commons. On a personal note, I am making a shameless plug for myself. I have tr created a Twitter account designed specifically for Appleton North activities and athletics. The only items or content, content that will ever be posted on this account are shoutouts to Appleton North students and alumni, as well as score updates and reminders of upcoming events and activities. If this is something you are interested in, please consider following me at at an activities. I want to thank you for watching this screencast and wish you a very enjoyable and successful 2019-20 school year. If you have any questions throughout the school year about co-curricular activities or the code of conduct, please don't hesitate to stop in my office, which is located in the main office, or email me at wernernathan at aasd.k12.wi.us. Now that you have viewed this screencast, there is only one more thing that you need to do in order to fulfill your 2019-20 Code of Conduct requirement. You will need to stop into the main office to pick up a code meeting signing form. Once you and a parent or guardian both sign this form, please bring it back to the Student Services Office. Only then will you have fulfilled your Code of Conduct requirement, which is good for every activity you participate in during the 2019-20 school year. Let's have a great school year and go Lightning!